Thank you. Um, I'm Trevor Wood. My company is Network Midlands. I'm a computer hacker and a website developer. I'm also a PhD researcher at De Montfort University in Leicester. Um, before I actually start the talk, I thought I would just run through some foolish assumptions that I have made about you guys, because obviously I've never met any First being that you all know what PHP is, and MySQL, and JavaScript. Also, what a content management system is. So that would be something like WordPress or such like. This talk normally takes an hour and a quarter, and I have squeezed it down to half an hour, so there'll be stuff that comes up on here that I'm not going to read out. But if you want copies of, uh, a copy of the presentation, leave me your business card and I'll get that emailed out to you when I get back to the office next week. So, what are we going to cover? Well, first of all, uh, very quickly, the types of hackers that there are and their motivation, the top 10 vulnerabilities for a website, and what you can do about it. So, types of hackers. First of all, we have the black hat hacker, also just known as hacker. Um, they're, they're the bad guys, and they're mostly motivated by money. And they'll break into networks, websites, whatever, just to um, create computer viruses, uh, spread malware, ransomware, whatever. We have script kiddies. These are, um, how should we say, they're, they're, it's a bit of a derogatory term. They borrow code from other people and what they're trying to do is to prove how clever they are by defacing websites. You have hacktivists. These are um, people who have a, a, perhaps a political motivation for it. Um, they, they want to get behind the scenes and, and, and cause, cause some chaos too. We have state-sponsored hackers. Now, we, if you've been keeping any, any eye on the news, you may have heard that Russia uh, is um, at war and they are actually hacking uh, commercial websites around the world at the moment in an attempt to mess things up for, uh, for the rest of us. We have spy hackers. Now, these used to be called um, uh, the, the, these are the people who will try to find out what, uh, what the competitors are doing. Um, sometimes they'll do it by breaking into the network. Sometimes they might even get a job with the, uh, uh, with the company. That, with the company. Uh, it's corporate espionage, basically. We have cyber terrorists. I'm not going to dwell too much on them. We don't see an awful lot of that. But they just want to make things a mess. Then we have grey hat hackers. Now, these guys actually... They work outside the law, they hack websites without permission, but their motivation is to then go and try and earn some money by going to the company and say, oh look, I found a problem with your website, if you pay me some money I'll tell you what it is. And then you get white hat hackers. These are the cybersecurity specialists like me. Uh, clients will come and pay me to hack their website and to demonstrate, find the vulnerabilities and demonstrate. Incidentally, you know where black hat and white hat hackers come from? I'm looking around, I'm not sure anybody is quite old enough here <laughs> to remember the Saturday morning flicks um, where the good guys always wore white hats and the bad guys always wore black hats. Um, so I'm, I'm going to look at the uh, Open Web Application Software Project. They periodically publish the 10 most common vulnerabilities to websites. And they've recently updated this, so this is a bit of a new talk for me because some of the vulnerabilities have disappeared and some new ones have, uh, have, have appeared. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate these using a website that they prepare, uh, which is deliberately vulnerable. But, do not do this at home. Because if you do, it's illegal, unless you have the right pieces of paper signed. And you'll very soon find the blue flashing lights outside your house, and you'll be carted off to a dim and distant dungeon somewhere. 
So the first one is broken access control. I won't read all this out because um, uh, you can get it on the slide. Um, but this one, it allows, um, there, there are several, several types of it. The first one is a local file inclusion. So this will allow me to list the contents of all the files on a web server. Uh, so here we go, local file inclusion. The URL of that last page had page equals arbitrary file inclusion .php. <laughs> this is something you see quite a lot on websites, um, particularly WordPress if it's set up with the basic setup. So if you look at that parameter, if I change that to etc slash passwords, mm. uh, which is the location of the password file on a, a Linux system, so you get that, what do we see? Oh, there's a list of all the users on that website. It doesn't contain the passwords. Linux changed that a number of years ago. They just never changed the name. But that can be used to list the contents of any file on the, uh, uh, on the web server. So if we go back to the, this page, we've got remote file inclusion as well. Again, same thing, arbitrary file inclusion. But if I change that with a web page to a web page like google.co.uk, you'll see you get the Google search engine in there. Now, of course, everybody will see that and think, oh, that's, that's not clever. I, I'm, I'm not going to do anything silly about that. But there's a sign-up page. If I make a copy of that sign-up page and host it and include that, I can get people to log in and I get their, their login details. And if I'm really clever, with a piece of script behind it, I'll then take those login details and log them into the actual website and they will never know I've pinched it. So this can actually be fixed quite easily. Uh, in your PHP initialization, there's a parameter that should be set to off. In default installations these days it is, but in the very early ones it was set to on and if there's uh, PHP has been upgraded since then, it may not have changed. Your web developer will be able to do this or your web hosting company will be able to change it for you. Next one is cryptographic failures. And this is where they're not protecting sensitive data properly. Um, the one, one we heard of uh, earlier this year was from GoDaddy and Monty 3 Reg. They were storing passwords in plain text, and somebody hacked their website and got them all. That's very naughty. Um, another one on the cryptographic failure. Most, a lot of websites, particularly if you, the ones that you can log into and, uh, and you've got a profile page and such like, it allows you to change your password. So here, I'm logged in as me, and there's my password and confirm password and such like. But on the top of the page, there is a parameter UID equals 24. UID is often used for user identification and the, the number is unique to a particular person. So if I change that, say, mm, to one, I can now log in as admin, change the admin password uh, and whatever. So I've now got control of the admin account. Again, this is fairly easy to fix. You just make sure that UID isn't shown in the URL. I'll talk a little bit about that later. It may be though that UID 1 doesn't exist um, and, uh, or, or it's not admin, but there is a piece of software that we use that will scan through looking, just trying different user identification numbers and it will do thousands of them in a minute. To, so it, if this is a flaw, then it's very easy to find. We have injection. Um, this is where I put some code, like some SQL or some JavaScript or something, uh, and I can get the web server to do something it's not supposed to do. So uh, here we have, we can look up the various users on the website. If we know their username and password, we can put that into the, the space there and it'll tell us a bit about them. 
So I'm going to try admin and admin, which is very common. <laughs> Um, but actually, you see, oh, authentication failure. That doesn't, that's not right. Either there isn't an admin account or the password isn't admin. What I actually, oh, sorry, what I actually need to do is to put some code in there that will always come back true. Um, I haven't got time to explain how to do it, but you can Google it. You can put a bit of SQL into, in, into that that will bypass the password completely and we're going to always return true for the for whatever you put in the uh, username field. <coughs> and I did that with this website. And here I have a list of all the users, all their passwords, and their signatures. Why, why I would want their signatures, I don't know. But that's what came out. Um, <coughs> and uh, to prove it, I can actually log in as admin. And there are through the login page. And there I am, logged in as admin. I can now change admin details uh, and lock the real admin out, or better still, I can set up an admin account of my own that nobody else will see, and I have permanent access to that website. Uh, insecure design. This is a new category, in the, and it hasn't been updated on the website, on this test website yet. Um, but this, in, with insecure design, this is different to insecure implementation. No matter how well you implement something, if the design is insecure, it's going to be insecure. I've actually seen this on a client test. I did. It was um, a website that's selling high-end uh, electronics goods, and I found a, a way of buying a $1,000 color TV for a dollar. Because they were trying to be clever and make things very fast, they weren't checking something on the way back. Uh, and I could just change the value of the, uh, yeah, insert the communication going back from the website back to the server and change the price from 1,000 to one and it sold to you for a dollar. What have we got now? Uh, security misconfiguration. This apparently is the most commonly seen uh, of all the uh, um, problems at the moment. And again, I won't run through all this sort of thing, but um, th this allows me to do things like directory browsing. So earlier we saw this arbitrary file inclusion page. I can actually change that to uh, a directory location, like the ECT where the password file is changed. And I can actually see a, a, a directory listing. If I click on where it says parent directory, it will move up and it's just like directory browsing in Windows, um, but I shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, so yeah, um, I, clicked on the, I clicked on the accounts.txt file and I get a list of usernames, passwords, various other sorts of things, everything that was in that text file. Um, actually, this also falls under cryptographic failure because the, the, um, the whole thing is stored in plain text. And so clicking on the parent directory, I can move around as, as I wish to find out what else there is on it. It might actually show me up a page like this one. This is a PHP My Admin, and most web servers will have this somewhere. It allows an authorized person to modify databases behind the scene. Uh, most, well, all content management systems are built on databases. WordPress uses um, uh, MySQL, uh, as do several others. And this would allow me to, to get in there and, and uh, actually look directly at the database. So I could look for information such as credit card numbers and verification things. Or if I was being particularly nasty, I could wipe the whole database and get rid of the whole website, and I've seen that happen as well. Invalid file upload. Some websites allow you to upload files. This may be a log file, or an error file, or an image. If it isn't checked properly, you might upload something else. Now, I've uploaded a script file here, and very handily, it actually tells me where I can go to run it. I'm using the same uh, file inclusion as earlier, I can now run this script which will allow me 
to enter uh, Linux shell commands. And that's what I would see. And if I do a uh, command to list the directory, there are all the files in that directory. And with the right set of commands, I could do anything. I could take over the whole web server and every website that's hosted on it. Um, there are a number of ways of, of fixing this, but the main one is to restrict what type of files can be uploaded, and the second one is to restrict where files can be executed from. So this one, if I go back, was uploaded to temp, and first of all, we'd say, well, you can't upload PHP files, and secondly, we'd say, any files uploaded to, to temp, you're not allowed to execute. This is a good one, vulnerabilities and outdated components. Uh, web servers, websites, content management systems, plugins and everything, they are regularly being updated. Very often it's to introduce new features or to fix bugs, but sometimes it is to fix a security hole. Once so, uh, if, if, the, if it's not updated, and I can find out what software you're running behind that, which is fairly easy with some, some other monitoring software. Um, I can then say, oh, I, he's running a PHP version that allows me to do this, or a PHP, a PHP version five point something. And then I go to Google and I say, what are the vulnerabilities with that version of PHP? What can I do about with this? It might not be PHP, it might be one of the, the, the plugins that, uh, WordPress has. Uh, identification and authenti authentication failures. Um, this is being seen more rarely now. Uh, and this is where um, somebody will try to log in and manage or, or uh, the login will fail because uh, it fails to check the user's credentials properly. This is being seen less and less now because content management systems are managing this behind the scenes so the web developers don't have to think about it too much. Um, but how about privilege escalation? I've got a normal account here. Um, most, most systems will, you will have an admin account and you'll have a, a normal standard user account. Um, but if I can change some code, I can get myself admin privileges. Because this is a test site, it actually gives some hints to what to look at. So you'll see that um, it tells me what my user group, uh, user ID and group ID are, and tells me what I need to make them to, to get to get an admin privilege. Um, so I'm logged in as Trevor, and there's. That, that's the information it's giving me to work with. And again, uh, the URL has this um, parameter IV equals and a whole string of hexadecimal numbers. Those numbers um, include my user ID and my privilege and my group ID, which, which gives them privilege. And again, it takes a bit of fiddling around and a bit of, but I found by changing two, two of the numbers, a B to an A and a 5 to a 4, I've, I am now boot, I have got root privileges, I can control that website, do what I like with it. However, this one, as soon as I log out, it disappears. So one of the first things I would do is set up another account uh, for me to use any time I want to go in there. So there we go, user. software and data integrity failures. This is where um, you're, you're part of a software supply chain. So again, with a WordPress website, you might be downloading a new, uh, an update to a plugin. If, there's a, if somebody gets at that and puts a bug into it, that a security thing, a hole into it that they can use, then when you load it, uh, you, you can get stuck. The, um, Recently, there was a, a highly there was an attack on. Um, oh, sorry, I've forgotten that. 
Oh yes, solar winds. You might, might have heard of the solar winds attack. Um, some, somebody got into their software supply chain and they uploaded a malicious bit of code into their software which they then sent out to all their customers and several thousand customers got hit by attacks from that. Security logging and monitoring failures. This is a bit self-explanatory. If, if you're not logging it, you can't monitor it. If you're not monitoring it, you'll never know. I did a pen test for a client. Their uh, logging wasn't working. They never knew I'd been in there. And server-side request forgery. This is where you... Um, it's a bit difficult to explain, so I'll give you an example. And again, this is with a, a client. Uh, they were in the financial world and they were setting up a new system to allow their clients to log in and manage some stuff. And I was just testing the outside of it, so I wasn't even going behind the scenes. All I had was their login page, which had username, password, and the company logo. What I found was the way they, had, um, they were displaying the logo, I could copy the code for that, <coughs> add a bit of script to it, paste it into an email, and send it off to somebody. This person would then see the email, see the logo there, but behind the scenes, my script could have been downloading malware onto their computer and they would never have known. Now, if they were taking proper security precautions themselves, like anti proper antivirus and such like, it would probably have caught it, but it may not do. And that was basically because they misconfigured the, ser the, the web server for serving the, the logo. So, uh, what can you do about it? Well, you or your web developer should do these things regularly. Number one, check that your website looks okay. I had one client come to me saying that um, their website had been defaced with some pornography and when I looked back, it had been doing that for about five weeks. Make sure your content management systems are up to date, whether you're using WordPress, Joomla, or, or, or any other custom one, make sure you're running the latest version. And update all the plugins or modules that go with it. And regularly check the logs for hack attempts. Now this can be done semi-automatically in the background and send you an email saying, this is what we see. What's next? Oh, yes. You, your web developer, or your hosting company. Again, regularly. Update the server software. Because it's not only the website that's vulnerable, it's the server. And if somebody gets uh, onto your server, they can get onto the website. You can add extra security. So, use HTTPS, secure HTTP. Um, this will help encrypt communications between the browser and the web server, making it a lot harder for me to intercept information and change it. Install a web application firewall. You may have a firewall on the web server, but also put one on the website. Um, that, that will catch web-specific attacks. The so one on the web server is looking for attacks on the server. You may want to use a content delivery system that includes additional security. I use one called Cloudflare and that puts various other bits in front of it. Um, all the access to, to my clients' websites go through Cloudflare and it's a bit like the bouncers at a nightclub. They know who the bad guys are and they keep them out. They know who are the good guys and let them in and anybody they're not sure about, they challenge. And finally, get the website penetration tested by a properly qualified and certified white hat hacker like me. But then implement the recommendations. Because if you don't implement the recommend recommendations, you've just spent a lot of money for no reason whatsoever. Okay, um, I actually need your help. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier I'm doing a PhD at Demofit University. I'm actually um, looking at ways of detecting 
uh, advanced fishing nails. The, these are ones that are known as spear fishing or whale fishing or CEO for. Now, there's not a lot of data sets out there with these sort of emails in. So if you get them, I would really like you to send them to me. I've set up a website, mordor.org.uk, which is a bit of an in joke with one of my ex clients. It actually stands for members. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, hang on. Yeah, something. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Oh, Members Online Repository and Directory of Resources. Um, yeah, it, it, was a, it was an ongoing joke. It got shortened because of that. Um, but I set up a specific email address that you can send them to. So that's me. Um, any questions? Uh, if you scan that, you'll get my contact details on your phone. I would love to, con to connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions? Okay, uh, I'll start start back here. Yes. Yes. So on the, on, so the grey hats, the grey hat thing. Is that okay, the question is, what, for example, if you hack into your own bank account. The the the, the question is. Uh, grey hat hacking, how illegal is that? It is illegal. <laughs> um, although you are not, uh, although grey hat hackers they don't go on to exploit those hacks, it is still illegal. Hacking anything, whether it's a website, whether it's a bank account or whatever, even if it's your own, is actually illegal. Unless you have the right pieces of paper signed by the right people. If you want to hack into your bank account, talk to your bank manager and say you're going to do it. Um, just to cover your <laughs> and, 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 and get them to sign a piece of paper. Um, it's a difficult contract because uh, my, my one basically boils down to if I hack your website and I destroy your web server, it's your fault, not mine. Uh, and they're signing up to that. <laughs> yes, there was another one at, at the back there somewhere. Any more questions? Yes. Um, it's not something I'm prepared to go into because it would show a vulnerability to, uh, on a client site that, that um, would be unethical for me to do. But very simply, it meant that I could attach some JavaScript to the URL, which would then run something in the background to download the file. But I'm, I'm not prepared to say how that is done. Did you receive your $1 TV? Sorry? Did you receive your $1 TV? <laughs> Again, no, uh, because um, it was a penetration test. So I contacted the, the company and said, hey, look, I could just do this, you know. And uh, by the way, this is how you fix it. Um, it was a design error. It took about half an hour's work to fix. Um, and I could understand perfectly why they did what they did. But it, in the end, by doing doing it the proper way, it actually made no difference. They were trying to speed up response times, but it made no difference at all. Yes? So you mentioned PHP right at the start, and you went through some stuff like PHP and configuration, and often, I would often hear PHP be the problem, and people want to figure out the thing with PHP. Is PHP the problem? Are other languages and solutions better than PHP? Um, no, all languages will have their, uh, their vulnerabilities. Um, you hear PHP most because it's the, most, it's the one that's used most often. Um, but other, there, there were other languages. Back in the day, there was one called Perl. That was just as bad. Um, there's one now called Python that I'm working with uh, as part of my PhD. And that has vulnerabilities in it as well. There is a new one being worked on, it's called Rust. Mm. It's still in a very early development stage, um, but they, the team that are working on it, are um, their, their remit is to make it a secure programming language that will do a lot of the security stuff that uh, a programmer would have to normally do himself. It's done in the background so that they can forget about it. 
Um, and so far, it's proven to be really, really robust. It's just really not quite at the stage where you want to write large amounts of code in it and release it to the real world. Any further questions? Yes. So first of all, I'm a web developer, so I'm terrified. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many notes about things I need to do, uh, but I've made a few questions. Yeah. Um, so, and this is, I've, anyone that's been to these before will know I've asked this before, but I'm just always frustrated. Um, so I have a couple of clients who have websites with outdated PHP versions. Not on my server, but it's a thing. Obviously, it's really important that it's not. How do you convince clients <laughs> to update their PHP version? Because obviously, there are costs involved with it. And I'm, how do you convince them that actually your entire site is vulnerable and will explode? Um, actually, a lot of uh, hosting companies, it's, unless the PHP version is so badly out of date that they change the way it works, um, a lot of the hosting companies will just install the new version straight away. Mm -hmm. If you're using something like Plex or cPanel, there is an option to be able well, to install it. So in the example that I'm thinking of, this is what happened. They, it was really, really it was an old version of Code Ignited which used PHP 5 point something. Um, basically, their cPanel automatically updated to 7.5 and the entire thing broke. Right. Um, so they come crawling to go, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? It's broken. I looked and went, yeah, this is why. Luckily, that version is still the last thing you can technically keep. So I think they reverted the entire site back to the old version. I said, look, that's, yes, that's now working, but the reason it's been updated is because it's, out, it's, because it's insecure. So yeah, obviously, cPanels are doing that, but there is still a level of degree where they can still keep them running? Yeah. Uh, it will eventually get to a stage where, yeah, um, where, where it won't be, well, not only will it not be supported, but it will be removed and then their site yeah. will come to pieces anyway. Yeah. So really the, the only thing you can do is to, well actually no, there's two things. You can work at convincing them to get that bit of the site rewritten to work with a later bit of PHP, or you can just say, you're on your own. <laughs> And, and sack I like them. that. <laughs> and sack them. Um, I actually did that with a client because they wouldn't keep the website up to date. Um, and about two years later, they came calling back to me and said, Our website's a mess. Can you sort it out, please? We're getting hacked to left, right, and centre. Fair enough. My details oh. are up there. Oh. So I've got one more question. Yes. So, because you mentioned uh, privilege escalation. Yes. Um, and obviously use, the example you used was to do with the URL. I'm just wondering are there other ways that this can be done? Yes, there are. Um, if you can get access to the web server, um, then uh, you can use uh, hacks on, you can use Linux hacks rather right. than just website hacks to do it. Um, I did do a test, a penetration test on a website where um, there was a vulnerability in, a, in one of the plugins they had which allowed me to get at the web server. Now, if I'd had permission to attack the web server, I could have then escalated, once I got on that, I could have then escalated to uh, create myself an admin account. But I didn't have the permission to do that, it was outside of the scope, so I just said, you need to fix that, otherwise somebody's coming in there and they're gonna trash you. Any further questions? No, okay, well, my name's Trevor Wood. I'm one of the good guys because the good guys wear white hats. Thank you.